Este es el principio de las aguaradas historias aquí. This first place was called Quiche. There, shrouded in darkness, a goddess rolled yellow and white corn. She ground the grains nine times, then washed the corn milk with her hands into a gourd. The gathered milk became the grease and fat of humans. A god called the maker and modeler, the bearer and begetter, molded the corn grease into human flesh. All this happened in the presence of a plumed serpent. From corn alone came human legs and human arms, a human mouth and a human face. In this way, our first mothers and fathers were formed, molded from the grease of corn. They talked and made words. They looked and listened. All this happened before the first light, before the first dawn, before the sun, before the moon, prior to the dancing of distant stars. The first four humans who inherited the earth were called Jaguar Kitze, Jaguar Night, Dark Jaguar, and Jaguar Future. These first mother fathers produced all the tribes that are Maya. All the sacrificers and all the penitents had sprung from the loins of jaguars. The people led by jaguars moved to a place called Tulan. There the four jaguars sacrificed to the god Tohil. They recognized him as their god and in turn they were given fire. Then, on the jaguar's command, every tribe but one gave themselves to Tohil to be suckled from their breast and suckled from under their arms. And this, we are told, is what Tohil meant to be suckled, that all the tribes were to be cut open before God and that their hearts be removed through their sides and from under their arms. This horror... This slaughter happened before the sun rose above the sea. In abysmal darkness, the people were subjugated, humiliated, and cut open before Tohil. They gave blood, hearts, and gore. In desperation, the survivors tore themselves away. Our home is not here, they cried. So they trudged through a great hollow way and came to a mountain, a place called Advice. It is here where the survivors identified themselves, where they divided their numbers into many tribes. There on a mountain, holding counsel, waiting for the dawn, watching for the rising star, the people divided themselves and the tribes were named. It is not known how the tribes crossed the sea. It is known only that they were hungry, smelling wood, chewing on the sticks that supported them. What is revealed is that they stepped from stone to stone. They piled rocks upon the sand where the water was divided and they crossed over the sea. They followed the four jaguars who had taken four wives. Their names were Red Sea Turtle, Prawn House, Water Hummingbird, and Macaw House. Steam bath or vapor bath. Very difficult to see in here. 
Here's another big Mayan arch. Fire could have been here. Although the fire was probably here because that's a smoke escape. I'm getting this for Kramer and Tom Munich. New idea for a spa. And of course, the non-self-supporting Mayan arch. Okay, I think I have it figured out. I think they could control the heat with these two holes on each side. And the arch comes over, collects the heat in here. This is probably the fire pit. I don't even know if you can see it. And it exhausts out the back and the top if I had a chimney. And then at this end, there's another hole. And you can look into the jungle. On their new land beyond the sea, they fasted and the gods spoke. Get up and go, do not stay here. It's nearly dawn. The light will make you visible and your enemies live here. So move or all will be lost. The jaguars answered, Hide us in a place where we can remain your sacrificers, your bloodletters and blood carriers, your penitents. Columns. Supported roofs and ceremonies and living quarters are probably under them. Obviously a big room, and then numerous small rooms, small quarters, and you continue, it's all interconnected, another room, another room, another room. And another room. With the gods riding on the backs of jaguars, they passed from Hidden Canyon to the Great Pyramid and finally to Tohil's place. It was roots like this that saved Halliburton. He put his hand to him and climbed out. From this mountain, the Jaguars watched the tribes. They watched and waited for the sun carrier. Without sleep, without rest, the jaguars and the people cried their guts out. Sorrow and anguish filled the world. They had suffered. But now if they could see the birth of the sun, could witness the first dawning, then a band of light crossed the sun. It came first, stunning and brilliant, carrying the sun. Kopal was gathered and burned by the jaguars and the people. The incense was waved in the direction of the rising sun. The jaguars cried sweetly as they shook the burning Kopal towards the light, the first light that fell upon the earth. With the coming of the light, all the animals, great and small, were revealed. They sprang from their holes, crawled up from canyons and rivers. They stood on the mountain peaks. A parrot cried, a puma roared, and there screamed the plume jaguar. 
All the penitents and sacrificers knelt down. The sun was revealed. It was born. And to this day, only its reflection remains. In the wash of that first light, all the gods were turned to stone, and all the Mayan icons were turned to stone. The puma and jaguar, the rattlesnake and the ferdy lance, and the white spark striker that took the snake with him to the trees. These are the words from the ancient text. The gods and animals were turned to stone. Then once again began the bloodletting of the tribes by the four jaguars. It happened in such a way, just one or two persons at a time. So at first it was not obvious. Someone would disappear, a head would roll onto a road, and someone would say, the jaguars are eating again. They followed the cat tracks to where they disappeared. The trail was not clear. Nothing was clear. The tracks strayed, and so did the people. It clouded over, got dark and rain. The traces turned to mud. The penitents were blinded by mist and drizzle. They were tortured like this by three gods and four jaguars. So the people made a plan. They agreed to send two precious and radiant maidens to seduce the jaguar gods, to capture them and make them their own. The two young women were called Lust Woman and wailing woman, and they went to the place where Tohil bathed. There the gods saw the maidens washing, and there was a heaving in the hearts of the gods. If you read our book, our Bible, you will discover the details of this encounter. The gods were satisfied and joined the people, but the jaguars were not fooled, and the people continued to die. As for Lust Woman and Wailing Woman, they were admonished and reduced to the biting of ankles and shins. This would be forever their business. Next, the leaders of the tribes plotted a great attack. They would overwhelm the jaguars with their numbers. But jaguars, like gods, never rest, they never sleep, and they know all. Tohill warned the jaguars told them to fill a thousand gourds with yellow jackets and wasp. These insects were their only weapons against the tribes. On came the warriors and killers and countless assassins. Twenty times a thousand they marched as the jaguars opened the gourds. The wasps and yellow jackets swarmed like a cloud of smoke and descended on the tribes, stinging their eyes, poisoning their mouths, and paralyzing their arms and legs. The venom of the insects, like a god's blessing, muted the pain from the arrows and axes that cut them down. Even the wives of the jaguars became killers. All the tribes were conquered. The survivors begged for the lives and were spared. But in the Mayan way, they were destined to join the dead. They were required to pay blood tribute to the jaguars as long as there are days and as long as there is light. It was a time of Lord Deer. This was all reflected in the sky. All the tribes informed their sons and daughters explained how death would approach them, how they would be taken by death. The jaguars too felt the presence of death informed their wives of it, told their children, told all the tribes that they would be penitents and sacrificers. But before the jaguars disappeared, the people presented the jaguars with a sacred bundle, a bundle of flames. It was wound about with coverings and secured with a large knot. Its sewing was not clear, because no one watched as it was wrapped. It could never be opened. It was a gift from the people a memorial to their fathers. Why the jaguars disappeared is not clear. All that is known is that the first people, the bearers and begetters, came from beside the sea, from the east. They came in ancient times, and when they died they were old. Their reputation was for penitence and sacrifice. We're going, they said, but not dying. 
were coming back. After that, after the departure of the Jaguars, corn became the price of a wife, and the tribes grew to countless numbers. They settled in many places on many mountains. The origin of their fiery splendor was implanted everywhere, and those who dared, those who insulted them, or disturbed or attacked the Kichimaya, so began again the cutting of flesh and the pulling of hearts. Many tribes witness how the enemy, when captured in war, were cut open and killed for the splendor and majesty of the lords and their gods. And as it is written, the Lord Plume Serpent rose to almighty power, and blood was his tax, and cunning was his genius.